Hey guys, it's Bill from Linden, Tennessee. Back to the front part, do. Basically, today I spent, and yesterday, spent a lot of time coming up with a game plan on how to do this. Yesterday, I went to work, and, well, before I did that, I went on Marketplace and tried to find a zero turn, or one of them walk behind lawnmowers, or something, anything that had swivel casters on it that I could just get for cheap and steal the parts off of that I needed. And I came up pretty empty-handed in that regard. So um, I decided just to make my own. I'll make my own swivel caster. So I went to work and got on the big lathe, hogged out a piece of, uh, I don't know, whatever that, one and a half inch uh, tube um, rod, put some um, bushings in there, and uh, that is going to be my casters. And today... I built these, these little dudes. I went online and tried to figure out what the optimal caster angle is. And it turns out that they say that, so the center of the pivot to the center of the, the thing there should be about anywhere from two and a half to three inches. So, uh, two and a half to three and a half inches. So I just kind of grabbed somewhere in the middle and I made that. So that's going to work pretty good, I think. And what I'll end up doing is this is going to be the position that it goes. I need to drill a 7 8 inch hole at work and put a piece of um, rod through it and weld it from the bottom so that it doesn't go anywhere. And then I probably need some sort of a hardened um, shim, a washer or something like that to go underneath that bushing. I don't know. Uh, or maybe another bushing, something that will wear. I, I don't know. If you got any ideas, let me know. Or I'll just let it sit there and ride on that metal. It, you know, it's going to be all right. It'll be kind of a bear to get out of there if I ever had to replace it. But uh, anyway, I don't think I'll ever have to replace it. So that's kind of what I did today. And uh, yeah, did both sides. Just like that. Did both sides. And now what I'll do, I'm going to have it set up here. So because this is this is the most uh, forward that the axle is going to be. And in the other case, the axle will be back you know, here somewhere. And so that way it can just swivel around like that. The other thing that I did at first, I had those pivots way, way higher, much, much higher. In fact, high enough that this uh, top edge was flat. Um, the problem that that caused was if you if you look at where that is holding on up there, and then this pivot back here, if you were to draw a straight line from that one to that one, what happened if this is too high is that this gets really close to that line. So not only does a whole lot of, is a whole lot of pressure exerted on this structure right here, but uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of deflection, like going over a bump or something on a tire to pick this side up and this line and that line over center. And this whole thing uh, goes unstable, I guess you'd say. So I lowered this down probably four or five inches. So that means the way to get this unstable now is I'd have to hit a hit a tree, basically. So I'm not too worried about that. The problem that that kind of caused is now my cut height isn't terribly high. It's not as high as I'd like. And the only way to fix that is by pulling the front up. Um, yeah, so we'll just have to see how that goes. One thing that I'm going to do is, if, uh, if we imagine this sitting there like it's supposed to be, I'm going to have some bushings, some spacers that will go underneath, and then have like a um, one of those kind of hitch pins on the top. And what I can do is I can undo that hitch pin, pull this axle out of here, take one of the spacers off the bottom and put it on the top, and that will uh, lower my cut height um yeah that's uh that's how that's gonna work and um what else i don't know really that's it it's been a hot hot day uh not too bad today it's only 94 in here now huh. it was 97 in here yesterday but this is kind of progressing along nicely i'm also going to have a little stabilizer bar here oh uh, uh, Cut that out so that I can put that roughly here. And when I, I gotta again take this to work, 
drill a five eighths inch hole through that, and then this then this will bolt right there in that piece. And then this stabilizer bar will keep this thing from going anywhere. And I want to try the best as I can to have the center line of this match up with the center line of that. That way, um, you know, if something goes up and down, they pivot together and there's not sort of a side force or anything imparted on these arms. But that's, uh, that's the progress for this weekend. Pretty pleased with it. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but it's going to look cool. Something else that I'll be able to do, I'll be able to, I think, put the three-point lift arms on the back and put this to the back and then it can ride on the little swivelly wheels also and then have a chain holding it from the um, top link position if i wanted to pull this behind me again uh, it wouldn't be a trailer this time so it wouldn't be as awkward um i don't know anyway talking out loud all right guys thanks for watching we'll see you next time